Descriptors provide a powerful general purpose way of intercepting attribute access. They're the mechanism behind properties, static methods, class methods, and super, to name but a few. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering descriptors. In my experience, they are often taught poorly as simply the mechanism that's behind properties in a hand wave you fashion and then ignored once you have the basics. I'm going to show you that they're simple to understand and that you will subsequently have access to a larger coding toolset and you will have a deeper understanding of how Python works. I'm going to present a concise but accurate and thorough explanation and demonstration of the descriptor protocol, including the use of properties that will make you a better programmer and better able to understand large code bases on GitHub. We're going to cover Python's automatic name mangling, what the descriptor protocol is, how to write and use your own descriptors, static, class, and instance methods, rewriting the Python dictionaries from keys class method in Python, the specific example of the property descriptor and how to use it properly. As a bonus, at the end of this tutorial, we will be rewriting Python's static method and class method descriptors in Python. Their implementation in CPython is written in C. Let's get to some code. Python doesn't have a private keyword like Java or C++, but Python does have name mangling. An attribute prefixed with dunder, two underscores, is renamed by the interpreter on the fly. We're defining a simple class, class A. We have an attribute, dunder secret value, and we'll just assign the value of one to it. We'll create an instance, instance A. We can see the wrapper for instance A, and there's nothing untoward about it. However, when we use the dot notation and try to access the value of Dunder secret value, we get an attribute error. How about trying to access it directly from the class? Again, attribute error. Let's use dir just to see what we've got available to us. As you can see, the first entry in this list is underscore a, the class name, and then Dunder secret value. This is what Python name mangling is. Whatever attribute you have, if it starts with two underscores, then Python is going to prefix your attribute name with underscore and then the class name. Calling dir on the class, again, we can see that we have our special name mangled attribute. So that's how we access it. and we can see that we have the value one here. When accessed from the instance and accessed from the class, we have the value one, so all is well. Why does Python do this? The reason is to avoid name clashes in inheritance. Here we have class B and we're inheriting from our parent class, class A. We are able to define an attribute with the same name, dunder secret value, without inadvertently affecting the dunder secret value from our parent class. A descriptor is an object attribute with binding behavior. But what does this mean? Its attribute access has been overridden by methods in the descriptor protocol. These methods are dunder get, dunder set, and dunder delete. If any of those methods are overridden, then that object is said to be a descriptor. The default behavior for attribute access is to get, set, or delete the attribute from its dictionary. Let's create a simple class with two attributes, x and y. We assign one to x and two to y. We instantiate it and our instance is s here. If we want to access the attributes, we use the dot notation and we type in s.x and s.y. Here, when we're accessing the attributes in this way, what's happening is Python is searching for the values of these in the instance dictionary. In fact, we can have a look at the instance dictionary if we were to type in s.dunderdict. So that's two underscores, dict, and then another two underscores. That's the instance dictionary. And if Python doesn't find the key there, our keys in this case being X and Y, 
then what happens is that Python then goes and tries to find these keys and the values in type a dot dundedict and then the key in square brackets. Recall that type A, in this instance, it would give us the class. So first Python looks in the instance dictionary, and then if it's not there, it has a look in the class itself. This is called the lookup chain, and if the keys weren't found in the class, then Python would continue to look through the base classes of our class, which isn't applicable here, also excluding any meta classes. Now let's implement a descriptor and invoke it. Recall that I said the descriptor protocol was when dunderget, dunderset, or dunderdelete, if any one of the three had been defined and overridden in a class of which the attribute in question is an instance. That'll make more sense with this example. We create a class, descriptor class, and in the dunder init, what we're going to do is we're going to take an initial value, and so the default is none. We're going to give it a name, just call it var, and then self.val will be equal to the initial value and self.name will be equal to the name. For this example, we're going to define dunderget and dunderset. In dunderget, we put self as the first parameter and we'll also take an object and the object type. Whenever our dunderget is called, we'll print the terminal retrieving and then the name of the variable and then we'll return our value. Dunder set, by contrast, takes an object and the value, not the object type. We'll print setting and then the name of the variable, and then we'll change our self.val to equal the value that's passed in. Now we have our descriptor class. So how do we use it? Let's alter our example here with the simple class by making the x attribute actually a descriptor class object. We'll leave y as it is. In our class definition, we're going to make one change. Where we had originally assigned the value of 1 to x, this time we're going to make x an instance of descriptor class. So we write the constructor for descriptor class, we'll make the value 1 and we'll call it variable x. What happens when we run our code this time? So look, we have retrieving variable x and then 1 and then 2. What's happened is that we haven't changed any end user code. We still have print s.x and print s.y but what we have done is by using a descriptor, we've rerouted the dunderget to our own dunderget, and that's why we see retrieving variable x and why self.val is returned, i.e. whatever value we pass to it in the descriptor constructor, in this case one. What have we demonstrated here? We've demonstrated that we don't need to change end user code to make massive changes in how the program runs. Sure, here we're only printing a retrieving and then the name, but we could have all sorts of code, all sorts of logic in here. If we wanted to change the value of s.x, we would have s.x and then the equal sign and then the new value. That's not any different to code that we would write without a descriptor. But because we have, we are rerouting things to our own dunder set. And that's why we have printed to the terminal setting variable x, retrieving variable x. Here we have the signature for the descriptor get, set, and delete. If you define any of these methods, an object is considered a descriptor and it can therefore override default behavior upon being looked up as an attribute. If both dunderget and dunderset are defined, the descriptor is known as a data descriptor. If only dunderget is defined, then it's called a non-data descriptor. This has importance with respect to what happens with items that are already in an instance's dictionary, but we'll cover that in part two. 
you can do some really neat things. For instance, you can make a read-only attribute, so a read-only data descriptor, by defining both get and set. But in Dunder set, what you'll put in is simply to raise an attribute error when called. If anyone tries to set a new value to the attribute, then they'll get an exception. But the fact that Dunder set is defined means that the descriptor as a whole becomes a data descriptor. We're out of time for today, but there's still so many neat things to go through. We've covered what is perhaps more of the drier theory, so now we get to implement our newfound prowess in Python. Tomorrow in part two, we're going to master properties in Python and be able to create managed attributes, including extending a property in a subclass. We'll learn all about class methods and static methods, including writing a Python implementation of the dict.fromkeys class method, which is written in C. We'll write our own Python implementation of static method and class method, and we'll apply our knowledge to understand what's going on in the Django source code. Finally, we'll learn how to make lazily computed properties by understanding getAtter, setAtter, and getAttribute. Plus, there's still that bonus there.